in this video, we will describe our approach to the anteromedial ankle hematoma block. Indications for an aspiration of the ankle include diagnosis of joint effusion causing pathology such as septic arthritis and gout. Indications for an aspiration and hematoma block include pain control when reducing ankle fractures just displayed here. Here is a Weber B ankle fracture with medial clear space widening. A hematoma block of the ankle is a very effective method of pain control when performing the reduction to close down that medial clear space as displayed here. This also functions as the anteromedial portal site for the injection. The anteromedial portal to the ankle joint is at the level of the tibiotalar joints between the medial malleolus and tibialis anterior tendon. Risks of this procedure include infection, iatrogenic cartilage damage from the needle, bleeding, lidocaine toxicity, which can be avoided with aspiration prior to injection of lidocaine to ensure you are not in a vascular structure. It is important to ensure you have all needed supplies prior to performing this procedure, including, which is not shown in this slide, any splinting supplies required for the pathology following the ankle hematoma block. The first step is to perform appropriate setup, informed consent, and a timeout. The patient should be positioned supine, allow for the leg to sit naturally in slight external rotation to have access to the anteromedial ankle joints, allow for the ankle to naturally sit in plantar flexion which allows a larger joint entry point due to the narrower width of the talus posteriorly, and assemble all supplies to prevent delays during the procedure. Mark out your appropriate landmarks. We prefer to trace out the medial malleolus, the medial axilla of the tibial plafond, as well as the tibialis anterior tendon, and in between those structures, you can palpate the soft spot to the anteromedial ankle, as displayed here. Apply topical ethyl chloride spray to the anteromedial portal, and a sterile prep is performed. Next, the aspiration of the fracture hematoma is performed. When going in with a needle, you should feel two losses of resistance, the first at the skin and the second at the capsule as you enter the ankle joint. If you feel a stop of bone prior to this, adjust your trajectory. If the stop of bone is hard, you are likely hitting the medial malleolus or the anterior tibia and adjust your trajectory accordingly. If you feel that you are entering soft cartilage, you are likely hitting the tailored dome and also must adjust accordingly. Once into the ankle joint, aspirate the hematoma as much as you can and following that procedure, detach your syringe leaving the 18 gauge needle in the ankle joint. Attach a 10cc syringe of 1% lidocaine without epinephrine. Aspirate to ensure you are not in a vascular structure. It is okay to see dark hematoma, which is normal, and then inject the 10 cc of lidocaine into the ankle joint, and there should be little to no resistance when injecting the lidocaine. For post-injection care, since many of these are done for ankle fracture reductions, it will be whatever preferred method of immobilization your institution uses for immobilization of ankle fractures that require reduction. At our institution, this includes dry gauze, webral, and AO short leg splints, and non-weight-bearing precautions of that extremity. Here we will demonstrate a video of our hematoma block. Demonstrated again here is the supine positioning with the ankle and plantar flexion and slight external rotation. The tibialis anterior tendon and medial malleolus is marked out and the soft spot between them is palpated and marked. The anteromedial portal is sprayed for anesthesia and then sterilely prepped with chloroprep sticks. Following sterile preparation, the trajectory of the needle into the ankle joint from the anteromedial portal is planned. It should be in a slight lateral trajectory to enter the ankle joint, and you should feel the two losses of resistance as described previously, the skin and at the ankle joint. As you enter the ankle joint and you start to aspirate, you will notice dark hematoma. Aspirate as much hematoma as you can. In this case, the fracture was a day old and about four cc's of hematoma was aspirated. When the aspiration is complete, detach your syringe from the 18 gauge needle, leaving it in the ankle joint, and then attach a fresh 10 cc syringe filled with 1% lidocaine without epinephrine. Once secure, aspirate again to ensure you are not in a vascular structure. It is okay to see some drawback of old hematoma blood and then the 10 cc of lidocaine should enter the joint easily without resistance. Following injection, you may withdraw the needle and apply pressure and then your appropriate immobilization. 